So I guess we can call this confessions of a junior developer and my experience doing dumb stuff and things that I just remember as a junior dev when I started working professionally after learning how to code on my own. Hopefully talking about some of these things that I jotted down will refresh my memory and even help me think of other things that happened when I was a junior developer that I didn't think about when I wrote these items down. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the first one. And one of the things I remember that made me feel really, really dumb when I was a junior dev or when I was learning how to code and I started going to meetups was a lot of the lingo and terminology and acronyms that all the other developers seem to know and I didn't. And as silly as it sounds, it really made me feel dumb not knowing these things. It made me feel like I, I should know these things. So I remember I would like jot down a lot of things that people would say, terminology that I wasn't familiar with, pretty much anything that I heard that people would talk about, I would make a little note or I would just kind of step to the side and Google it on my phone sometimes to, to know what people were talking about because I felt like I was just out of place. I felt like everybody knew it and I didn't and it made me feel really stupid. Hearing those experienced developers drop all those acronyms and those buzzwords and lingo and terminology that I just wasn't familiar with really, really bugged me a lot. And maybe that's not really a confession and maybe this shouldn't have been labeled junior developer confessions, but that's just one of the things that I wanted to point out because I remember it used to make me feel really, really stupid and it's all just stuff that you learn. So you could do what I did and jot them down or go search them on your phone when you're chatting with people or after you chat with someone, you know, if you kind of glaze over and realize that you don't really know what they're saying, you could just remember that stuff and go look it up and then kind of study it a little bit so that way you don't have to feel out of place when you do talk with other developers when you're first starting out but it's okay so that's the first thing that I remember that really used to bug me when I was just getting started and when I first got my first job and it just made me feel like I wasn't cut out for this stuff because I couldn't even keep up with conversation about topics that I was trying to learn or that I actually got hired for and and yeah it was very demoralizing at the time but yeah, I got over it and realized that it was just part of the process and it's part of being a junior dev so one thing that still kind of happens now and it doesn't happen as often unless it's a really advanced topic that I am completely unfamiliar with. But when I was first starting out, every topic was a really advanced topic that I wasn't familiar with. I remember people explaining stuff to me and being so lost and having no idea what they were talking about and just trying to keep up. And I would stop people and I would ask them to kind of go over things again because things would just not stick. And everything felt like it was going in one ear and out the other. And it wasn't because I wasn't trying to pay attention it was just because there was so much information and so many things to learn. And the first time I experienced this was when I went to a React meetup. And it was when I just first got started with React, I was maybe getting comfortable with installing and running a React app locally on my computer. At that point, I had only been learning for a few months. I was feeling a little bit comfortable with HTML and CSS. And I had an okay understanding of JavaScript, but by no means was I an expert. I was still very much a new guy and I remember talking to the guy that ran the meetup and he was a senior level React developer and he was basically going through an application and kind of trying to explain it to me. And I remember asking him, what should I build as like my first React project? And he told me to build like a messenger app. And I was just so beyond my skill level at that time. And then he started to basically tell me how to do it. And at one point I had to stop him and tell him like, hey man, I, I just, I can't keep up. Like, I'm sorry, you kind of lost me a bit and I don't want you to keep repeating yourself because I don't understand this stuff that well and I'm just getting started and I'm kind of new. And he was super helpful and he was like, no worries, you gotta start somewhere. And he kind of just kept going. And developers are like that. We just like to solve problems and we just like to talk about things that we build and we like to discuss how we can better fix problems and how we can implement things. And, you know, it may be even in his own way, it was helpful to him to have to explain it to a new person in a way that I could understand it. So he kept helping me, but I just remember that happening. And it happened when I got my first job. I remember at my first developer job, I got my first assignments and I, got stuck. Left and right, I got stuck. And I had to ask every other developer there for help. They would sit down and they would tell me what I needed to do to fix something. And then I would go back and try to do what they said. And then half of the stuff they told me would just get lost. And I tried to write things down and I tried to remember what people were telling me. And I, I'd make sure to like comment on the code or try to write pseudo code in areas that they were kind of telling me that I needed to do things in just so I can make those changes in those files and on those lines so I can go back and try to remember what they were telling telling me to do. And I remember thinking like, man, they're probably not going to keep me around for long because I can't remember anything that they keep explaining to me. And 
I think that's just part of the process. I tried my best to take notes. I tried my best to remember as much as I could. Honestly, a lot of it ended up making me take work home with me because there were technologies that I wasn't familiar with because they were new to me because of the job that I got. And there were things that I was trying to learn that I felt like I had to learn it on my free time. And that was kind of a mistake I made when I was first starting out because that led to me feeling burned out. And after a while of taking work home with you and working on things on your free time, you start to realize that it's not worth it. And if you don't, you will eventually burn out. It's just a matter of time. So I did a lot of that it wasn't good for me and it wasn't good for my work life balance. And I don't do that anymore because now I have some more experience. And if I have to learn something for my job, I learn it on the clock because it's something I'm doing for work. It's not something I'm doing for fun. And if it's for work, then I learn it on work hours. And that's just how it should be. Employers shouldn't expect you to learn technologies on your free time in order to be better at your job. They should expect you to learn those technologies on the job and they should allocate enough time for you to get a good understanding of technologies that you need to use in order to do your job if they want you to be a good employee. If not, then you'll probably end up looking for a new job sooner or later if they don't give you that time to learn and grow and be better at your job and you have to do it on your free time. Just a little food for thought there. All right, let's move on to the next thing that I have on this list that I jotted down. <laughs> Speaking of asking people for help and bugging people and then not knowing what to do. I remember getting stuck on stuff a lot and that's normal. It's normal to get stuck on stuff. I remember one time my lead developer spent a couple hours helping me with something. We even stayed at work after five o'clock trying to figure this out. After it was all said and done, I misspelled one of the file names and that's what was causing the problem. Since I led the developer down the wrong path of what I thought the problem was because I was a junior developer and I thought that something wasn't working because it just wasn't working, not because I didn't name the file of the correct name. So it actually wasn't being referenced. And our linter and our compiler didn't catch that because we couldn't find what the error was. And then finally, it was such a stupid thing that we debugged it for so long and it ended up being a, a typo. And I remember just feeling so small and not that my lead dev made me feel small. I made myself feel small because it felt like I should have been better than that. It felt like at this point I had been working there for a few months. I had completed a couple tasks. I was doing a good job and I finally felt like I was coming around to, you know, understanding what I needed to do at my job on a regular basis. And then I came across a problem that I couldn't fix at, after taking a few hours from someone else's time and finding out that it was just something so simple and so stupid and just something that made me feel really, really dumb. And I wanted to confess that because you're gonna have those things happen. Occasionally some stupid little things like that still happen nowadays, but I definitely don't get stuck on things that simple for that long now as I'm experienced, but I do remember that happening. And I do remember how crappy it made me feel and I just felt like man I should just quit I don't even I don't even want to show up at work tomorrow I feel so dumb but those things happen so don't be too hard on yourself if you if you make stupid mistakes as a junior developer you're a junior dev it's expected it'll happen and you'll look back one day and laugh about it like I do now or you'll make a YouTube video on it to tell other people not to worry about it all right let's see what else I had on this list oh I took down an API <laughs> yeah a few months into my first developer job I was assigned the task of fixing a lot of our compiler lint and linter errors that we were getting on our code. And I touched a lot of files. I mean, a lot of files. I remember putting in a pull request for like 40 files and it was code reviewed by multiple people. And there was a lot of things that were caught. And there was one thing that didn't get caught where I changed a while loop and I didn't escape out of the while loop and <laughs> I basically caused an infinite loop. So a while loop will execute until you basically tell it to stop. So if you don't tell it to stop, it's just going to keep running, which creates an infinite loop, which eventually will just crash your application. I did that. I introduced an infinite loop into our code that went unnoticed. I ended up taking down one of our APIs for almost a whole day. We didn't realize that we took the API down because this API wasn't used by us. It was used by another department that ran a different application that used our web API to feed data to their application and they couldn't figure out why it was down until they came and asked us to check it out. Once it was investigated, we found that it was code that I introduced. It was really nice that a lot of the developers there were cool about it and we used to have a rubber chicken, which I have a little rubber chicken back there by that like and subscribe sign that you probably can't really see, but 
that's why I have that rubber chicken, kind of like a memento and something to remind me to pay homage of my first dev job because we would give out that rubber chicken when someone would break something in production. And I remember that was the first time I got the rubber chicken. It was nice because even though they were kind of roasting me a little bit, they made me feel like it was okay and everybody did it and eventually the rubber chicken was handed off to someone else and eventually it came back to me when I did something else that got put out in production that shouldn't have been. And I think that was cool and I, I really loved my team that I worked with when I worked my first job. It was the management that I really didn't enjoy. But you know, another developer there also took down an API that actually was a bigger deal when he did it a few months before I had started. So it was just a rookie mistake. And even though it was code reviewed and even though it got tested, something silently failed and I broke something and took down something in production and it happens. I think that email went out from HBO recently and they blamed it on an intern and I kind of believe it because I can see that happening. So it that kind of stuff happens and if it happens to you when you're a junior developer, don't feel too bad about it. It happens to the best of us. Code reviews. When I was a junior developer, I would get assigned code reviews. Code reviews were awful when I was a junior developer from both sides. Getting my code reviewed and feeling like I didn't really understand what they were telling me to do and then also taking it a little personal. Even though I knew not to, it still hurt when you realize that you did something completely dumb and not at all how you should have done it. It still kind of hits your ego a little bit. I never I never took it personal, I guess, but it still, it still stung a little bit. And I just remember having people comment on my code during code review and not really understanding what they were trying to tell me and then having to go and bug them and being like, hey, what were you trying to tell me to do here? And it just always made me feel like I had I was just dumb when my code would get reviewed and all those emails would start popping up and I'd start getting anxiety, seeing like, oh, so-and-so has commented, so-and-so has commented, so-and-so has commented, and then you're like, oh, geez, I don't, I don't even wanna see, I don't wanna see what it is, I, I hope I'm not an idiot for what I put in there, and hopefully all the comments are, are, are things that I can easily fix and I don't have to rewrite all this stuff because I did it wrong. And then another thing about code reviews as a junior developer, when I had to review other people's code, I had no idea what I was looking at, or I had no idea what to point out. I had no idea what to comment on. I was scared to comment on things because I felt like I had no right to comment on anyone's code. I was the most junior developer there and I had no idea what I was doing. So who am I to actually put a comment in a code review and say like, hey, you should do this differently. So code reviews as a junior developer were just all around very difficult. I don't know if I'm the only one that feels like that about code reviews. Let me know in the comments if you feel a certain way about code reviews, but I just remember them stressing me out and giving me anxiety when I was a junior developer. I think I have one more thing on this list that I wanna mention before I finish this video. And it was copying and pasting stuff and not having any idea what it was doing. When I was first learning how to code, I would copy and paste stuff from Stack Overflow. When I got my first job as a developer and I was doing it professionally, I started like reverse engineering a lot of code that was already in our code base. Because when you're working on something that's very similar to something else that's already implemented in your application, it's okay to go and like copy that stuff and bring it over and then try to reverse engineer it or tailor it to whatever feature that you're working on. And I tell people like, try to walk through the code, read every single line, understand what it's doing, but you just don't know when you're a junior and <laughs> when you just don't know and you don't have the experience and you don't understand what's going on in the code that you're copying and you copy all this different stuff over and you put it in your app and then things start breaking and you can't figure it out and then you have to debug your own crap that you copy and pasted from all these different places and none of it is anything that you actually wrote and then you're debugging other people's code that you changed around and you can't figure out why it's broken. Ah, oh, I did that so often. And honestly, it was a bad habit that I developed and I remember my, my lead dev telling me like, don't copy as much code, try to write stuff on your own. I still reverse engineer stuff now. Now I just know what it's doing. But when I was a junior and I didn't really know what I was copying and pasting, oh, it was was a nightmare and it's one of my confessions because looking back now I should have probably not done that so much but yeah that's my last confession I hope these were helpful as far as learning how to code videos go I don't know if this video is gonna be helpful I feel like it's a little unorthodox with what you mostly see on YouTube but I figured that sharing my experience has to help someone out there who may be feeling the same way if they got their first job as a developer and they're a junior right now and they're feeling like they're doing a lot of stupid stuff. Or if you're just learning how to code right now and you're doing a lot of things that feel like you shouldn't be doing and a lot of things make you feel dumb as you're learning, trust me, it's okay. As time goes on, you'll get more experience. Things that you think are super complicated right now will be 
very easy for you in a few years and you'll look back and think like, how was I ever so dumb? And I still feel dumb every day. It's okay, it's part of the process. As long as you're learning, as long as you keep working towards your goals, as long as you make steps in the right direction and keep working hard every day, you'll get better. It's just a matter of time. All right, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you next time.